Hey, good afternoon, scholars. Uh, what better thing to do on a rainy, cold Sunday than to drink tea and go over comma usage? <laughs> anyway, um, no, in all seriousness, uh, I'm reading through your papers, providing feedback, and man, come on. All my honors, AP scholars, we need some serious intervention on comma usage. This is my analogy for how many of you use commas. You take a bunch of them in your hand and you're rolling it like, they're like Yahtzee dice and you just go boom. And wherever they fall, wherever they land, doesn't matter. Uh, that's where you, they're placed. Okay, you need serious help when it comes to comma usage because what happens is that you are creating comma splices, you are creating incomplete sentences, you're telling me something's restrictive versus non-restrictive, and it really deters the reader from understanding your message. So, yeah, I know this is very elementary school, but let's go back to those little hallways and those little seats. Um, maybe even go back to middle school. Um, sorry, but we have to we have to address this. Okay, uh, more matter, uh, less art, right? Okay, so use a comma after a dependent clause. All right, so. After working at ShopRite, I went home and took a bath. All right, that's pretty self-explanatory, right? This cannot be by itself. After working at ShopRite cannot stand by itself. It's a dependent clause. And it would make it a fragment if you just put a period there, which some of you do. A fragment has no verb or subject, okay? Uh, sometimes it has perhaps a subject, but there's just no verb. Or it's just all verb, no subject. It, whatever it is, it's just you need both. Uh, the subject in the sentence is I, and then the subject, of course, is uh, went. This sentence could also be written like this. I went home and took a bath after working at ShopRite. No commas ne needed there, really. You don't put a comma here. Uh, the subject and the verb at the beginning of the, of the sentence makes it a loose sentence. So the subject and verb come here. This is a periodic sentence, right? Remember, there was a video lecture on uh, sentence variety. Either one's fine. You just want a variety of things. Generally speaking, like right here and right there again, when pausing, use a comma. It allows the reader to take a breath. It also builds air and space between the magic you have composed on the page. Now, I'm hoping it's magic, right? Uh, even if it's not magic, it still allows us to take a breath, pause, and move on. In such times, um, if the dependent clause is short, the comma can sometimes be omitted. In such times, it's essential to wear a mask. You don't need really a comma here because it's 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 kind of all part of it, right? When you write, but I wouldn't take off any points or get uh, be in my bag if there was a comma here. But you know, you don't need a comma there. You can write a periodic sentence by using a series of dependent clauses before the subject or verb, like this. When the time is right, pause. When you know, when you, when you know your feeling is right, well, I need some grammar lessons. When the time is right, when you know feeling is right, see, I caught that mistake because the I saw what it wanted to see, but when you have to enunciate, you know there's a problem. When you know the feeling is right and you have a sense of the almighty on your side, comma, you should ask the guy out for a Zoom date, right? We don't go on dates anymore. We do Zoom dates or Google chat. It's horrible, I know, but that's what we have to do right now. Um, so here, so you have three dependent clauses and then the subject and verb over here, All right? The pink is the independent clause. You can move this at the beginning. And that totally makes sense. But you want to add variety to your sentence structure, um, to your essay, uh, to your story, whatever you're writing, your cover letter. Um, and if you don't know how to use the comma, then you start writing sentences like this um, all the time with subject, verb, predicate, subject, verb, predicate, right? All right, rule number two, two. Use a comma in a series. Now, you guys mostly know this. The second comma is called an Oxford comma. The band Vampire Weekend has a catchy and funny song called that, but it's not school appropriate uh, for this video. Um, I call it nerd rock, and I'm a nerd and I like to rock, so 
Vampire Weekend is one of my was one of my go-to bands. All right, for example, I love baseball, comma soccer, comma and football. This is called the Oxford comma. Right? Um, why you use it is because if he says I love baseball, comma soccer and football, this is like a collective um, subject right here. Okay, uh, not subject, uh, direct object. I is the I is the subject. Right, but all three of them are are they're coordinated. Right. Learning to appreciate school, comma, learning to acknowledge the mentors, comma, and willing to admit errors are ways to advance toward your dreams. Okay. Um, so here we have three things that are parallel. Um, something like this is easy to put the commas in, but when you have longer sentences, like up here, boop, 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 okay, um, sometimes uh, you guys forget to put the commas in. All right, number three. Number three, use a comma when writing a non-restrictive phrase. Okay, I just I just blew your minds. Like, what is that, Mr. Bell? What's well, a non-restrictive phrase? Sorry if my uh, uh, intonation there makes you seem like I'm not really that smart. I know you guys are smart. I'm just like uh, doing like stereotype voices. This means the part of the sentence that could be taken out and the sentence could still make sense. Right? Many young writers use one comma but forget the second. Oftentimes, uh, commas travel in pairs, right? My brother, comma, who happens to live in Lancaster, comma, is an ecologist, right? So there's a comma here and there's a comma here. My brother, subject, verb, is, right? So that sentence makes sense. I could take this out and it would make sense. But I want to keep it and I could actually add other things in there, more non-restrictive phrases, and it still makes sense. Or I could write it like this, my brother, comma, an ecologist, comma, lives in Lancaster. This is called an appositive because it renames the noun. Let me write that in there. An appositive. An appositive. Okay. Renames the noun. Um, two commas are needed like parentheses here. So think of them as parentheses like this. Generally, parentheses aren't used anymore because it seems rather archaic. Yeah, you, you wouldn't want to really write that. Um, but it's like a little an aside. Like, and you see a Shakespeare play, and the guy's like talking to us as an aside, like, I love him. Actually, I really hate him, but, you know, and he says that to the, or she says that to the audience. Um, but we generally don't use these anymore. You never, that would look really stupid if you had the parentheses there. Um, but think of it, if you can put it in parentheses, use commas. It's non-restrictive. It does not restrict the meaning of the sentence. All right. Do not use a comma when writing a restrictive sentence like this. All students who are late today should report to the office. Okay. Back in the day when we are in school. All right. Hopefully we'll be back soon. So if you were late, report to the office. Okay. Is it all students? No. That's ridiculous. No, just those who are late. So this... is restricts it restricts the noun all right this would not make sense all students should report to the office imagine the stampede to the office if you have doubts read the sentence out loud does it restrict the noun or noun phrase are there demands on it restrictive clauses are more common than non-restrictive but still use non-restrictive to add variety to the writing again it's all about variety okay consider is the clause essential or non-essential if essential, no commas, please. All right, uh, number four, okay? Um, and a lot of this um, comes from Strunk and White. That I mean, doesn't come from Strunk and White, but uh, they're, they're very simple, easy, prescriptive uh, st style of writing, uh, which really sets down, like, these are some basic rules, all right? Use a comma before conjunction, introducing a coordinate clause, all right? And this is a problem you guys use a lot. The early records of the city have disappeared, and the story of its early years can be no longer constructed. Okay, so we have early records, and then prepositional phrase, and then have disappeared. Okay, that is a false sentence. But then we have story can no longer be reconstructed. So we have like really two dependent clauses here. So we need a comma. You wouldn't do this. You could do this. 
That would be fine. Or you could do this. That's fine too. Either way is fine. It's about being uh, using variety. All right. However, this, oh my God, I must see this type of construction. I'm going to make up a number 85% of the time. And it just gets so tired. It's like hearing the same note played on the piano or on a tuba. You go crazy after reading this type of construction all the time. Another thing you guys tend to do all the time, and I know that's hyperbole, you begin sentences like this. But, 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 and, and this is outside the scope of commas, but you guys do that all the time. Um, it's Especially in formal writing, you generally don't want to start like with a chordate conjunction, um, informal writing and stuff like that, maybe. Um, once in a while is fine, but man, sometimes I, I, I'm seeing it like eight times on a single page. All right, here's another example. The situation is perilous, but there is still one chance of escape. There's a pause there. The situation is perilous. I could do this. I'm not saying this is better. Okay, you guys, sometimes you guys put commas here and commas here. That's common, but don't do that. Semicolon. And and this is the this is the fulcrum, the middle. The situation is perilous, full stop. However, there is still one chance to escape. All right. You could write this as an, there, uh, there is still one chance to escape, even though the situation is perilous. You can rewrite this many different ways, right? Just think about this way is probably the simplest in a subordinated way, right? So if you wanted this to be more important than this, I would flip-flop this, okay? And that's called subordination. But that sentence is totally fine, but you need a comma there. If there's no comma there, I'm gonna be in my bag, all right? In such cases, in such, such subordinated sentences where the one idea is more important than the other, use a comma before the coordinating conjunction. Many young writers write too many sentences like this, as I just said. Many such sentences need to be rewritten for style and variety like this. The situation is perilous. Oh, I just I just went over this. Oh my god. Okay. Uh, okay, let's take a look at this one. I had never been in the place before. Semicolon. So I had difficulty in finding my way about. All right. That's not so good. As I had never been in a place before, I had difficulty in finding my way about. Okay. Um, the second sentence is clearer. And it flows without the awkward full stop at the center. This is like the awkward full stop. When the subject is the same for both parts of the cl uh, clauses, all right, a comma can be omitted like this. Sam is a great guy and is very smart. So Sam is and Sam is. But if I were to change the sentence like this, Sam is a great guy and Susie is smart as well. Well, guess what? I need a coordinated conjunction and a comma. But if Sam is both the subject of both parts of the sentence, I don't need a comma. Just like you don't need a comma here. I love baseball and soccer. Whoop. Football. There's no commas there. You don't need commas there. Right. The and um, takes the place of it. But use a comma when a subject uh, occurs, like Sam's a great guy, and I love him very much. So this is a new subject, not Sam anymore. All right, there are two subjects here, Sam and I. So coordinating conjunction, comma. All right, we get this. All right, we fall asleep. Hopefully you're playing me on 1.5 speed so you can get through this faster. As long as you get the information. Number five, independent clauses are never joined with a comma. This makes the comma splice. I love Susan with the depth, woo, with the depths of my soul, with the depth of my heart. I love Mary with the width of my soul. All right. Um, yeah, I seem to have a problem here if I love women like this. But, uh, but anyway, uh, you see, this is an independent clause. This is independent. And here I have a comma splice holding those two together. Both sentences uh, with a subject and verb. I would rewrite this. This was indeed true. I'm just making this up. I love Susan with the death of my heart. And I love Mary with the width of my soul. Or you can use a semicolon. I love Susan with the death of my heart. Full stop. I love Mary with the width of my soul. 
or use subordination. If you want to make one more important than the other, while I love Susan with the depth of my heart, I love Mary with the depth of my soul. Obviously, who here is more important? Mary. If it was reverse, you would end with Susan for emphasis. Here's another way you can rewrite this. With the depth of my heart, I love Susan. I love Mary with the width of my soul. You know what? I like this one better. It's very parallel. Um, or this one, with the depth of my heart, I love Susan. Ooh, so I'm using a periodic construction. And then with the width of my soul, I love Mary. Notice the parallel structure here. Ooh, I just impressed myself. Ooh. Anyway, I'll pat myself on the back there. All the above are parallel construction, right? You vary the sentence structure like arranging notes on a staff of music. Some of you out there are musicians, and you know you need lots of different notes and different places to make the magic, right? Arrange with care. You're not just throwing any words down to get it done, right? You're creating art. You're artist here. Number six, commas are not periods. Do not use unless you are writing fiction and you want the fragment to be emphatic, all right? I just read an essay. The first five lines of the essay on a research paper were fragments. And I'm like, no, just stop, all right? Making my hair turn white, all right? Um, coming home from school, eating Lucky Charms with no milk. Okay, you see how that might sound like cool? But we're not writing poetry here, and this is not like some sort of like novel where you're getting the interior of a person's mind and there's no punctuation in the interior of a person's mind, just ask James Joyce. But, you know, in, in most writing that you do, academics, you, you don't use fragments unless, you're to, unless you want it for emphasis and it's, you want it to be obvious. It was a long way home, taking the wrong turn. Yeah, this is a fragment. Bad. Sometimes in fiction, creative nonfiction, fragments or incomplete thoughts as a poetic device, right? as I've said. So writers sometimes use fragmentary, fragmentary language as thoughts pulled from the brain as memories in Harry Potter. Like, ooh, you, take a, you pull something from Harry Potter's memory, you put it in like the, memory, the, the sieve thing, ah, and he goes into it. All right. But, okay, that's, that's magic. Um, we're, you're trying to be clear. Number seven. A participial phrase like walking down the road must be matched with a comma and a noun uh, who was doing the walking. Uh, you guys, I just read one just the other day, another research project about uh, the same problem. This is a common mistake and oftentimes on the SAT. But more importantly, you look like an immature writer. Running for the bus, the turtle on the road maybe slip. Okay, who was running? The turtle was running? No, I've never seen a turtle run. All right, and who did the slipping? Oh, I slipped. So who was running, uh, running for the bus? I slipped on a turtle on the road, right? Two prepositional uh, phrases here. And sometimes you can just get rid of it like this. Where else would you slip on a turtle? I'd probably get rid of that, blow it up much better. All right, number eight, we're almost done. We're almost done, hang in there. Dates, today is April 22nd, comma, 2020. Or from February to April, comma, 2020. Today is Wednesday, comma, April 22nd, all right? Pretty easy, all right, with the dates, all right? There's not too much uh, division with that. Uh, and in England, though, this would be a little weird because they would do, like, something like, you know, they put the, not that it's weird, but they just do things differently like that. Um, number nine, set off words of introduction, all right? No, comma. I will not go to the prom with you, right? Of course, comma, sure I'll go. What do you think I am? Uh, an idiot? All right, so at the beginning or the end, there's a pause and gently set off words of introduction, right? Number 10, avoid, use commas to avoid confusion, right? For many, comma, senior year is a memorable year. If there is no comma, this is confusion. Right. For many seniors, for many senior. So I'm confused there reading the sentence because for many seniors. Right. So for many pause and then senior year is a memorable year. Right. I could rewrite the sentence saying it's a memorable. It's a memorable year for many seniors. That's another way I can do it. But again, if you know the different ways of using the comma and sentence construction, you just become a better writer because you know where to emphasize your um, 
your subject. Number 11, use commas when the flow is interrupted. We are, in fact, in quarantine. All right, here, you need commas. No commas, that looks pretty strange. Because you don't pause. We are, in fact, in quarantine. We are, in fact, in quarantine. Or, in fact, we are in quarantine. All right, that's another way you can do it. Uh, putting in fact at the end here probably wouldn't work as well, but we should never forget, however, right? This is when you don't use a semicolon because this is not a full sentence. When this is a full sentence, then you do want to use the semicolon and comma. We should never, we should not forget, however, how many of us are still alive and well. However, we should not forget how many of us are still alive and well. So I can change this, however, and put it different places, but you know. You need this to avoid confusion. Number 12, okay? I'm going to be finished my tea by the time this is over. Using however and words such like this, we are in fact, um, we are in quarantine, however, we should fight, uh, fight uh, COVID-19. This is a commas place, all right? As I said before, you need a semicolon and a, and a comma here. We are in quarantine, full stop, full sentence. However, Another full sentence, right? This cannot join two sentences, right? Oh, sorry about that. Here we go. Um, where did this happen? Oh, I know what I did. Okay. Do not use however and therefore, moreover, adverb or conjunction with just two commas. And I think, believe it or not, da -da -da, that is the end. Okay. Finish. Finish. Or in journalism, you just put 30. That, let's see. All right, guys. Uh, be safe. Um, I, you know, really just want to see. I really don't want to have to give a quiz on this. I will only give a quiz if I see the comma usage is not improving, or maybe I'll have you like look through your last paper and let me know all the comma problems that you had and see where you are using the comma. And but what I want to just say is the application of this. All right. So in the next essay, whether it's the book review or some other type of thing that you're writing that you're always writing. Um, that we're applying these things. It's the application, right? If you're an athlete, if you're a musician, you learn these things and then you apply it at game time. You apply it in a concert, right? These are skills that you are learning, right? And if you guys can learn these skills, you're gonna be much better than your peers and competing for jobs and writing magnificent cover letters and being able to communicate in whatever field you go into. All right, guys, peace. Be safe. Uh, get some tea. It's delicious.